Hello! This demonstrational video will cover several forms of synthetic aperture radar imaging using Ancortex software defined radar. Today I'll be using two Ancortex radars. The first is the 2482 evaluation kit. This is a 24 GHz radar with 2 GHz of bandwidth. The radar operates in several modes, including FMCW, CW, and FSK, but mainly I'll be using FMCW. The kit includes everything you need to get up and running, including antennas, power, and data cables, and the enclosure itself. You can find more information about this radar by checking out the website listed on the top right of the screen. For all of the demonstrations I'll be showing today, the radar will be mounted on a SAR rail platform. I can mount different radar packages on the rail and can adjust a single axis in increments of 1.6 millimeters. The platform is mobile, and it has a power bank to allow recording for several hours at a time. A Raspberry Pi 3 is used to control the radar, run experiments, and store results for later processing. To visualize the results, I follow a basic FMCW SAR imaging technique. I start by collecting my current position. This is checked with a laser ranging device, which offers readings plus or minus 1 mm from truth. The radar is instructed to collect 64 FMCW sweeps and store them to the Raspberry Pi. I then instruct the platform to move a specific distance down the rail for the next aperture. When I've collected the desired number of apertures, I begin my processing. Image processing begins by first massaging the raw data. I extract the raw in-phase and quadrature samples by applying IQ balancing to reduce any hardware errors. After this, I reshape my IQ data into a matrix with samples along the rows and sweeps along the columns. I apply windowing and execute a range FFT, and then average all of my sweeps to increase my SNR for that particular aperture. In several of my demonstrations, I'll use autofocusing to correct the phase errors and provide a clear image. After this, I either perform windowing and an FFT down apertures to gather my angle information, or I'll process the samples through a delay in summer back projection algorithm. Further image enhancement uh, can be performed by discarding objects that are closer or farther than my focused target range. Okay, so let's start out with some indoor imaging. I'm going to start with a simple corner reflector mounted at the elevation of the radar about 3 meters downrange. There are several other metallic objects in the room, and I've mapped this all out in the figure on the left. A picture of what the scene actually looks like is shown on the right. For this experiment, I collected apertures with a separation of 6.35 millimeters. The antennas have been oriented in the following configuration. These are the standard 24 gigahertz antennas that will come with your kit. I've used several SMA connectors and right angle connectors to make a configuration I'd like to use, but note that at 24 gigahertz, this will incur a loss in power as these connections are often rated below 6 gigahertz. Great, so these are my results for each of the receive channels. I've plotted range on the x-axis and azimuth on the y-axis. I've highlighted the corner reflector in both images. My azimuth resolution at the range is approximately 3 centimeters, so the corner reflector being about 30 and a half centimeters should come out quite nicely. Notice that you can also see the back walls of the room at about 6 meters and other office furniture between the reflector and the walls. I've gone ahead and interpolated the data and performed stolt mapping to try and localize and focus the return from the corner reflector. Interestingly, it looks like I've aimed channel A slightly downwards as I'm getting reflections off the table from the corner reflector that it's being held up on. You can also somewhat make out the shape of the corner reflector. If I proceed to coherently process both channels together, the corner reflector becomes quite clear and the reflections from the table are removed. For my next trial, I'd like to know what a vertical pole will show up as. These half-inch stainless steel poles are often found throughout the walls of buildings and carry electrical and data cables. I position the pole at the same position as the corner reflector from my previous trial. I'm also leaving the antenna configuration the same as it was during the first trial. I'm solely interested in observing how the pole will appear, so I'd like to make as minimal changes as I can. Wow, so as expected, I don't get the strong return from the corner reflector, but I'm still able to make out the location of the pole in the scene. I perform the same stolt mapping with an extra gain stage to try and enhance the return from the pole. 
It shows up well in channel A, along with our table reflections once more, but channel B seems to have drifted. When I coherently integrate the two channels to process the image, this phase drift becomes clearly evident. In fact, it mistakenly shows two targets instead of one. For my third trial, I placed the corner reflector back in the scene with the stainless steel pole. I've placed the corner reflector approximately 1 meter to the right of the radar's midline. It's resting about 1.2 meters behind the pole. For this trial, the antennas were configured in a slightly different manner to try and remove those reflections from the table that were showing up in channel A from before. These dimensions are also adjusted in, my, in MATLAB to ensure I'm reconstructing the image appropriately. Now the results of the trial were interesting. While the pole appeared to localize nicely, the corner reflector is smeared across the azimuth. The wall and other office furniture are still showing up fine. When the interpolation results of each channel are integrated, I obtain a good image of the pole, as you can see from the image before, the corner reflector's energy has been smeared across the azimuth. After spending some more time reviewing my results, I found I was undersampling the azimuth by about half. This smearing artifact will show up in the next two trials as the same sampling parameters were used for those trials. I wanted to see how the antenna geometry would affect my results, so I rearranged them in a vertical fashion. Again, this geometry is echoed in MATLAB to ensure my back projection and interpolation results are accurate. The single channel results show a power drop of about 8 dB compared to when I had the antennas in a horizontal fashion. As I explained before, the smearing from the corner reflector is due to undersampling the azimuth for that range. After interpolation, I get an image of the pole and corner reflector. While the angle of the corner reflector is closer to its true location, it's not precise due to the undersampling. Okay, we were able to get decent range results, so let's play some more with the azimuth. I've removed the pipe and place the corner reflector 1 meter to the left of the radar's midline and approximately 3 meters downrange. I've also increased my azimuth sampling to 4.8 millimeters. The results appear very promising. The corner reflector is showing up at the correct size of the radar's midline at the appropriate range. If I zoom in, I can make out the table the corner reflector is resting on, and there's a strong return coming from the corner reflector, the remaining office furniture, and the wall at approximately 6 meters. Now I've moved the corner reflector to the other side of the table at the same range and cross range distances. As expected, our corner reflector is showing up on the proper side of the radar's midline at the correct range. If I zoom in, I can make out just as before the same objects I saw in the previous image. Alright, we've received some good results indoors. Now let's head outdoors with the Ancortec 580AD. The 580AD evaluation kit operates at 5.8 GHz with up to 400 MHz of bandwidth. Unlike the 2482, there is only one receive channel. The radar can operate in FMCW, FSK, or CW mode. Plus, it also includes everything you need to get started collecting data, including the antennas, power cables, and data cables, as well as the enclosure. You can find more information, including the data sheets and detailed parameters, on the website I've listed above. The 580AD uses two patch panel antennas. They're larger than the horn antennas included in the 2482. I've mounted these antennas on a piece of particle board and can freely adjust the antenna configuration. The final geometry is displayed on the right. My first collection was looking at a series of concrete openings in a parking garage. At 13 meters, I should observe a 0.5 meter azimuth resolution and see the openings. Not only do they show up in my imagery, but you can even count the number of openings. Next, I took the radar top side and collected returns from the broad side of a 2014 Chrysler Town & Country. The vehicle shows up in my results with the strongest portion of the return directly downrange. I then pulled the radar back approximately 8 meters and ran a series of collections. The vehicle shows up, but I also pick up one of the concrete corners along the side of the wall. Next, I brought the radar and the van to one of the lower levels of the parking garage. 
The van was slanted, and I can clearly see the outline of the van in the image. More interestingly, I can also observe the concrete supports that are evenly spaced along the ceiling. Alright, now let's take a look at the through-wall capabilities of Ancortex 580ED Evaluation Kit. This radar operates at 5.8 GHz, which is more than capable of penetrating drywall, wood, and various other separating walls and foundations. I'm starting out by looking at the stainless steel pole case from before. Before I attempt to image through walls, I'll need to make sure I can filter out strong returns that I'll be receiving from the immediate wall. So I start with an estimate of what the pole will look like and work from there. This is the same layout as before, the only difference will be the filtering. The pole is positioned approximately 2.8 meters downrange from the radar. By filtering out an initial range when performing processing and applying a system of weights dependent on the range, I can get very clear pictures of the objects directly ahead of me. The pole shows up quite nicely and is localized. Now, I'll start by placing the pole on a support and moving it approximately one-third of a meter from a 15 centimeter drywall separator. The radar is then placed approximately two meters from the other side of the wall. I'm interested in more real-world results, so let's leave some office equipment near the radar. The pole remains in the empty hallway. The imaging results for this trial are interesting. The pole shows up quite weak at about 2.5 meters, a little closer than truth. The return from the other side of the hallway comes out quite nicely. Next, I'm placing the radar in the hallway, aimed towards the inside of the room. I'll be trying to image a corner reflector that's placed at the left end of the radar array, about 6 meters down range. After applying heavy weighting based on range, a weak return from the reflector was detected at the proper angle and distance. For this situation, a data adaptive resolution enhancement algorithm would serve the end user well, as the initial results don't provide too much information about the scene behind the wall. For my last trial, I've placed the radar in the center of an occupied lab, and had it face the same hallway from before. Instead of a pipe, I've placed a corner reflector in the center of the hallway, one meter to the left of the radar's midline. There are various pieces of metal office furniture below the elevation of the radar. The initial 2D results clearly show the immediate wall and the wall on the opposite side of the hallway. The corner reflector can just barely be seen, but its presence is detectable. Plotting the same results on a 3D plane clearly show the return from the corner reflector just to the left of the radar's midline. For reference, I've plotted the radar aperture positions as red dots. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the preliminary results we've been able to obtain using Ancortex software-defined radars. You can find more information about these products, other demonstrational videos and materials, and much more on our website at www.ancortech.com. Thanks again for watching.